Does the world really need a Surface laptop? I'm going to tell you today my full review as Microsoft takes on Apple. Stay tuned. One thing that makes a Surface laptop stand out is its design. It's absolutely the reason why you're going to be paying a lot of money for it. It's pretty much perfect. It's expertly engineered, has no flaws, and just feels really, really nice. Now, it's made from an aluminum chassis, which feels pretty solid. There's no flex to it whatsoever, and it's very smooth. It also doesn't pick up fingerprints too well either, which is a really nice bonus. So don't worry about wiping it down. There's really nothing that's going to show up. There's also no screws on it and no seams whatsoever. It's absolutely clean. Of course, that means you can't open it and upgrade it, so that's going to be a trade-off with this device. Even turning to the bottom here, you can see it's just absolutely immaculate. There are no marks whatsoever. You can see the Microsoft logo here along with some device information, but it's very subtle. You almost have to shimmer it in the light just to see it. The feet themselves are rubber and give adequate clearance. And there's actually no venting on the bottom either. Instead, you can see this really nice grill here. One side basically brings in the air, the other side shoots it out. The fan itself is super quiet. Now this is the Core i5 version, and I could say it's really, really quiet. I barely ever heard the fan. And when the fan does come on, it's whisper. You have to put your ear up to it to actually hear it. It also doesn't get hot. It does get a little warm on the bottom, but it never went over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which I thought was pretty impressive. Coming around to the left-hand side here, of course, we have the ports, or should I say, lack thereof. You have a USB-A mini display port. You also have a headphone jack. This little thing here appears to be for the antenna, so it's a little bit different from the chassis itself. That's really the only kind of blemish on this design, but you're really not going to notice it too much. As you'll notice, there is no USB Type-C, and that's pretty much one of the biggest complaints of this device. I have no issues with it, but with no USB Type-C or Thunderbolt 3 support, this device won't have much forward-looking abilities. Coming around here to the right-hand side, all you have is a single Surface Connect port, so that's where your power is. I mistakenly refer to that as an SD card slot on the original video, and this does not have an SD card slot. So that is all you're going to get for ports here. Very minimalist. Now, I have no problems with this for my usage, but if you're going to be looking to buy the Surface laptop, just keep that in mind. This has very limited input output options for you. One of the unique engineering feats that they accomplished here is on the front. There is actually no notch here to open up the laptop. Now that may seem like a downside, but it's actually not bad. At any point, you can actually grab the ridge here and pull it up. In fact, let me show you. You can open it one-handed with ease. Just grab it here and it just opens. It's one of the most elegant features of this device. It just feels really, really nice. You can see also how quickly there it logs you in. I mean, I'm not even sitting in front of this thing and it still did it very quickly. Now, how Microsoft explained this to me is when the display is about this position, it's already turning on as well as the camera. As you push it up, it's starting to scan the room and look for you. And now it's going to log me in. Now, that may seem kind of subtle, but it's one of the little delightful things about this laptop and using it every day. The more you open it, the more frequently you're going to appreciate how fast this is. It's one of the defining features compared to other laptops out there. Now, of course, anyone else could probably do that as well, but it's what makes a Surface laptop a little bit unique. All right, let's talk a little bit about this display. It is a 13 and a half inch pixel sense. It has this crazy resolution of 2256 by 1504, which just rolls off the tongue, of course. It has a 201 pixel per inch. It's also a three by two aspect ratio. Now, all that is similar to Surface Book, except for the resolution. In fact, this is the lowest resolution Surface device on the market today. It's even lower than the Surface Pro, which is only 12 and a half inch. So keep that in mind. But at 201 pixels per inch, I can't really say I noticed it. It just looks fantastic. It also has a layer of Corning Gorilla Glass 3 over the top. And now again, little subtle engineering stuff here. What's really neat is there's no ridge along the edge here. So most laptops will actually have a little lip that comes around. And that's so when you close it, it separates it from the keyboard. You don't get that here. Instead, it's just a straight piece of glass that shoots across and it's completely smooth. Now, that doesn't really affect the laptop whatsoever. In fact, it doesn't mark the screen up or anything. I haven't noticed any downside to it. It just makes it feel really exquisite. Of course, it's also a touch screen and you can use the pen on it. Now, this is not a pen device. And in fact, if you really want to use a pen a lot, of course, Microsoft will sell you the Surface Pro or Surface Book. And I do agree with that decision. That's the way it should be. But I will say, I was actually pleasantly surprised in using the pen with this device. Now, you don't want to use it all the time for, say, taking notes. But hey, if you got to sign a PDF document or you just want to scribble on the screen and maybe do some arrows, maybe a quick drawing, 
Uh, it actually is really nice and works pretty well. It's one of those features where you may not use it all the time, but that one time you actually need it, you're going to be glad Microsoft put it there. A few other bits about this display, Microsoft promises 100% sRGB. I can actually vouch for that. We did a test and it does come out to that. It's also very bright. I would say it's bright enough to use outdoors. And although it's glossy, it's not offensively glossy. So don't worry about that. It also doesn't pick up fingerprints too well either, which is again, a very nice feature to have. I really hate touchscreens. I don't like actually marring them up, but I did not have a problem here. After using it for a few days, it still looked very clean to me. All right, let's talk a little bit about light bleed. So if you've had a Surface Pro device in the past, this is a very popular complaint. Basically, there were hot spots on the screen where it was brighter than dark. That is not a problem here. I did not notice it whatsoever. So kudos to Microsoft for addressing that. Let's talk a little bit about these bezels too. They are narrower than the Surface Pro, but I know some of you who love like the Dell XPS 13, they're not quite bezel -less. sorry. Uh, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. On top here, you do have a camera that is a 720p camera which is not quite the 1080p that we would like, but considering how thin this is, and Microsoft considers this to be the thinnest bonded glass touchscreen in the world, basically. So not a bad thing. Actually, the camera is very good. In fact, I really like the way it looks. You do have your dual microphones up here, as well as your Windows Hello IR cameras, which are blacked out, so you really can't see them. Really nice effect, very minimal and clean looking. Let's talk a little bit about this keyboard and the keyboard deck specifically. Now, it's a really kind of unique device. This actually feels a lot like the Surface Pro, including those keys. Now, there are differences. The key travels 1.5 millimeter versus the 1.3 millimeter of the Surface Pro. So basically, the key pushes down further, feels a little bit more natural. They are still kind of plastic keys, which is kind of weird. I was expecting maybe metal like the Surface Book, but instead, it's literally like they took the Surface Pro and turned it to a laptop. It's not bad, but it's not great either, to be honest. It's a really good keyboard. I don't have any issues typing on it, but I just felt the keys just feel a little not as premium as I expected. But overall, they work very well. You also have three-stage backlighting, and that's the other change here, of course. They did change the upper row here. Thankfully, they actually put screen brightness dedicated buttons. So you have those here. You have, of course, the keyboard brightness button over here. And you have some media play buttons as well. So kind of a nice change. And you can see there is actually a dedicated power button, which is kind of in a unique position. But I guess they didn't want to mix it up with the delete button, which a lot of people are used to using their pinky. So I had no issues. I never touched it. It's also a very quick button. So you'll use that when it comes out of hibernation mode when it's been asleep for a couple hours. Um, very fast, nice button, no complaints. Overall, the keys are pretty nice. Now, let's talk about this deck here. That is Alcantara. So this is a synthetic fabric. It's meant to sort of mimic leather and suede a bit, and it's definitely unique. Now, there is some concern about this, that it's going to get marred up and pick up stains over time. Since I can't fast forward into the future, I can't tell you that. I've had no issues for what is almost two weeks now in using this device, so it feels really nice to me. I can say this is a little bit different than the Alcantara that's found on the Surface Ergonomic keyboard as well as the old Surface Pro Signature type cover. Uh, they basically put a extra layer of polyurethane on there. So it feels really nice and luxurious, no complaints there. However, I did notice after a few days, there's a very pungent smell coming from it. And that's definitely, I think, the polyurethane coating. Now, it goes away, of course. It's like any new laptop smell that you may experience. But being that this is all kind of cloth, it just stuck around a little bit more than I would have liked. And I think for people who are really sensitive to smells, it may actually bother you. Uh, Microsoft did say if it does get dirty, you spill anything on it, just take a microfiber cloth along with some water and soap, and you can just wipe it down, and that should basically clean it off. Let's talk a little bit about this trackpad. It is, of course, precision. It's also very large and has a glass layer on it. No complaints whatsoever. It is bigger than the Surface Pros and it's very much like the Surface Book. So Microsoft has really nailed their trackpads in the past and that carries over here as well. One thing I really want to point out about the Surface laptop is almost how boring it is when you open it. And I mean that actually in a good way. When you open this device, all you get is display, keyboard, and trackpad. And that's really how computers should look. There are no speaker grills. There's no Chrome. There's nothing that's pointing out. There's no labels. There's just nothing. It's just keyboard and display. And I really appreciate that effect. In fact, what I said before, there are no speakers. They are actually below the keyboard deck, which is really interesting. Microsoft calls these Omnisonic and they're Dolby Audio Premium. 
I can say these are definitely the best Surface speakers out there. They're better than the Surface Pro speakers. They're definitely better than the Surface Book. Just really good. And probably that's because in this base, it can resonate a little bit more. So you get a little bit more richness to the volume. I have no complaints. It's really, really good sound. So if you listen to movies a lot or listen to music or just want to use this on business calls, it's actually going to be very good. Performance on the Surface laptop is very middle of the road. Do not buy this device expecting outrageous performance. It's just not there. Now this version runs a Intel Core i7 7200U, which is a really nice processor, seventh generation, gets excellent battery life. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, overall though, it's not the quickest machine out there. Same thing with the SSD, which on this version is a Toshiba at 256 gigs. And Microsoft made a big deal here. They put the SSD into the motherboard itself as opposed to a separate module that allowed them to save space and put more battery in this device. So that's pretty cool, but performance is not very strong. Now I should point out even a slow SSD is really fast compared to say a hard disk drive. So I have no complaints whatsoever, but if you're going to use this to transfer say a lot of large files, you will notice some speed degradation compared to say something like the HP Spectre X360 or Dell XPS 13, whose SSDs are basically twice as fast as this one. To put this all in perspective, I have no complaints using the Surface laptop, but it is not gonna be the fastest device out there. In fact, you can get say a Dell XPS 13 with a Core i7, and you'll probably get much better performance in that device, but you are gonna get very good battery life here. For battery life, Microsoft claims 14 and a half hours with the Surface laptop at Core i5. Now that of course is with a closed video loop, not real world usage, which is closer to eight hours, maybe even nine. So I consider that to be all day usage. You can probably push that further if you use battery saver and keep your display down. It's really kind of hard to judge because while well, everybody uses their devices differently. Overall though, I'm very happy. I did not feel I ever needed to take the charger with me, which is really what is the important message here. I will also say when you close that lid, you're gonna get very good standby battery life. There will be no depletion whatsoever. So you can close that lid and come back to it a few days later, you'll still have a full battery. It's really impressive. I think they've done a really good job. That's a combination of the hardware as well as what they've done with Windows 10. So kudos to Microsoft for that one. No discussion in the Surface laptop would be complete without talking about Windows 10 S. So if you heard about this, some people are wording it as a gimped version of Windows. That's partially true, but not entirely. Let me explain to you what is going on here. Windows 10 S is simply a version of Windows 10 Pro. That may be surprising, but it's accurate. Windows 10 S has a lot of the same features as Pro, which is why you can upgrade to it. Now, the only limitation with Windows 10 S is you can only install apps from the store. That means if you download an app from the internet and it's an executable file and you try to run it, you're gonna get a little pop-up saying it won't run. But it's not really that big of a deal. If the app is found in the store, the little window is gonna tell you that app is available. You can click and go and download it. If you really want to install Pro though, you can also click another icon and it'll take you to the store to unlock Pro. And I should mention here, there's really no downloading of files or anything. All it's going to do is check a license, it downloads a configuration file, it's going to install and reboot the PC and go into Pro. That whole process takes less than three minutes. Now it's a one-way street, so once you go to Pro, you can't go back to S unless you factory reset the Surface laptop, so keep that in mind. So why even bother use Windows 10 S? So Microsoft says it's going to get better performance and better battery life. Now I want to put that in perspective. This is really about long-term usage. If you took a Windows 10 Pro machine and a Windows 10 S machine and ran them side by side, you'd get the same battery life, the same performance, everything is exactly the same between them. There's no differences. What Microsoft is talking about is long-term usage. If you install a lot of executable apps and you start running in your taskbar, and you get that whole thing where it's like 10 apps running, that's gonna to start to impact your battery life. It can make the device slower. What they're saying is with Windows 10 S, that laptop is gonna run the same on day one as day 1000. They can't guarantee that when you do Windows 10 Pro. So that's where those differences come. But if you actually upgrade to Windows 10 Pro and you don't install any executable files or you don't put anything in that taskbar and it's running in the background, well, it's gonna perform exactly the same as Windows 10 S. So there's really gonna be no battery difference, there'll be no performance difference. But keep in mind, running things like Chrome and Adobe Elements and all these kind of apps, do put little updater apps in the background. They're always gonna affect battery life and performance. So that's where it comes in. A lot of these things are hidden. Same thing with iTunes, if you dare to use that, will also do the same. So just keep that in mind. I like Windows 10 S, but the choice is yours. The upgrade is free through 2017. Afterwards, it'll be about $49. I don't consider this a big deal. Keep in mind though, it's only a three minute process to upgrade to Pro and that's it. All right, let's bring it all home. What do I think of the Surface laptop? So I've given this a lot of thought. I actually have two answers. If you're comfortable with the fact that this does not have USB Type-C and you're really okay with the price of it, 
I say go buy it. If you're just looking for validation, it's a great device. There's nothing wrong with that. I didn't find anything that was really bothering me. It gets great battery life. The performance was good. It feels nice and it looks awesome. It's just that premium Windows 10 experience that Microsoft was promising. So go get it. If, however, that person that's looking for a 13-inch Ultrabook and you're open-minded to other devices like the HP Spectre X360 or the Dell XPS 13, well, I have a tough time recommending this device. First of all, it's expensive. You're going to get a lot less ports on it. The performance is not nearly as good. So it's kind of hard to say not to look at those devices. For instance, the HP Spectre X360, especially at 4K, turns it to a tablet, it has pen. It's just a beautiful device. Like, why would you not try to get that device instead? Same with the Dell XPS 13. It's just a good value. It has really awesome performance and you get that Infinity Edge display. So I have a tough time recommending this device for those people, but if you do end up going with the Surface Laptop, you'll still be very happy with it. You'll just be paying a little bit more for it. In conclusion, there's a few ways to think about the Surface Laptop. If you're comparing it to just other 13-inch PCs, I think it's kind of a failure. After all, there's nothing unique about it. It's a straight-up laptop, a very nice one, but it lacks a killer feature, which is why many of you don't feel very strongly about it. Other Surface devices did something unique that was never seen before, and that's lacking here. If, however, you compare it to, say, an Apple MacBook or MacBook Pro, well, now the game is a little bit different. After all, that's what this device is aimed for. It's meant to lure people from the Apple world to the Windows 10 one. And I think it succeeds there by offering them a ridiculously luxurious experience. It's not for everyone, but for some people out there, they're going to absolutely want this. So just keep that in mind when you're evaluating the Surface Laptop. So there's my full review, the Microsoft Surface Laptop. Now, if you want more information on this review, head to Windows Central, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel, as we'll be covering the Surface Laptop and new Surface Pro extensively for the next month. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.